So I've got this Rainbird sprinkler controller here. And uh, I've been having problems with it lately when I um, switch the knob to try to set the various functions even though I may have the knob pointed at uh, let's say Thursday up in the display sometimes it won't display Thursday it'll tell me it's Monday or Tuesday or it'll just go uh, just back to like I'm uh, just regular my water schedule so I know there's a problem with this uh, switch in here so I'm going to disassemble this unit today and I'm going to show you how to take care of this this one happens to be the ESP6 TM, but uh, I think they make some other models that have either more or less stations. They're all going to be about the same, probably uh, virtually the same switch. So uh, let's start by showing you how to disassemble this thing. Alright, so I've already started by uh, disconnecting the AC wall transformer. It's been unplugged. We're going to start by just opening this little cover. It just comes off, there's a spare fuse inside if you need it. Uh, if it's wall mounted, there's going to be one screw in this hole right here. And then uh, I've already got this one uh, off the wall, so as you can see on the back there's just these little uh, hooks. They may have put two or three screws in it. Mine had one screw in the middle here to wall mount it. Uh, pull the knob straight off it just comes off and then the rest of this plate you can just kind of lift it up this whole thing will just it just snaps into place it'll come completely off and then inside we've got the main circuit board here alright so once you've got the uh, cover off you can remove the circuit board by lifting up on these four little tabs gently flexing the board there's one tab, number two, number three, and number four. The board can be lifted out. It's still going to be attached with this ribbon cable right here, so be very careful with it. But you're going to be able to uh, lift it up and do the work that you need to do from the back of the circuit board. We're going to begin by just simply removing the mode select dial. Um, let's see if I can get close enough where you can see. And that's done by just simply pushing these four little tabs one at a time until the switch is completely free and then just simply pulling the switch out I made a mark on mine and I put a corresponding mark on the circuit board so I'd make sure to get it back just in case it mattered once we get it off and what we're going to be looking at right here this is the uh, encoder portion of the circuit board and um, as you can see over here it's got this uh, green uh, it's kind of hard to describe but it's just a funky uh, green all over the circuit board so what I'm going to do clean these contacts I've already gone through it and I've already started scraping them is um, I've got a little brass brush here and uh, it's for a little rotary tool but I'm just going to use it as a stationary brush I'm just going to scrub the contacts until they're nice and shiny and all that green gunk has been taken off of the circuit board. It's not going to take much. Just a few seconds will actually clean it up really good. Once you're done with that, you can see the difference now. How much shinier it is. Uh, just go over it uh, with a little bit of alcohol to, to wipe the surface clean. Just a little bit more right down in there. So now we've got the uh, circuit board portion of the mode select switch all cleaned up. We're going to talk about cleaning the individual contacts here on the mode select dial itself. Let's try to get a good clear focus so you can see what we're doing here. That looks okay. So we're just going to very lightly scrape the tips of them only in one direction to make sure they don't bend over. So I've got this real fine brass brush, it's meant for a rotary tool, but I'm just using it as stationary. Once you get those done, take a Q-tip with some alcohol and just wipe them clean so there's no little residue left behind on there. As well, do the same thing with the mode select portion of the circuit board. 
Make sure it's nice and shiny. That looks great. Looks like it just left the factory. It's so nice and clean now. Now to keep this from happening in the future, what we're going to do is we're going to apply a little uh, dielectric compound to it, silicone compound. It's not heat sink compound and it's not RTV rubber. I've got this tube, it's many years old, but it's silicon dielectric compound. You can purchase this at an uh, auto parts store if you need some. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of the compound on the end of a Q-tip and just kind of dab it around on the circuit board. This is going to keep air away from the silver plating on the circuit board so that it does not tend to oxidize in the future. So I want to make sure we get a good smooth even coat all over it. As well I'm going to take a little bit more of it and I'm just going to dab it onto the switch contacts There we go. That looks great. I don't know if you can see it or not, it won't focus quite that close. But after that, just go ahead and very carefully slide that back into there. Line it up on the circuit board. You may have to try to uh, reinforce it from the back. I don't recommend any more stress on the circuit board, especially where this little black blob is. That's the IC chip, the microprocessor for this device. We don't want to try to bend it any more than we absolutely have to in that area. Snap this back in there. Make sure it rotates freely and it does. Line up the pegs in each corner. Snap all four tabs down. And then we can just give it a quick test by plugging it in. We'll look at the display on it as I rotate the knob. See what happens. There we go. Six, five, four, three, two. Everything's doing great. It's exactly what we want to see. It looks like it's working absolutely perfect. Just have to reset the time and everything in it. Everything's working great. So now we can go ahead and uh, reassemble it, hang it back on the wall. We should have many more years of use. This should actually last longer than it did from the factory with this good quality dielectric compound to keep, uh, uh, to keep the air away from the contacts. And that's what we're looking for. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope this helps you down the road.